the network. I'm thinking about doing it, but I want to know if it's like worth it if I don't really got a fan base, fan base like that. Yeah, I feel like you should do merch when like 20 to 30 people have asked you about it, or if you have like 20 to 30 people that you think you would potentially sell it to, because realistically, only like 5% of those people are going to buy it. So you got to kind of like, you know, it has to be worth it. But I feel like I always look at like everything, like when should projects drop, when should merch drop, and I would say when you start to notice a bunch of people asking about it, it's probably the time to start working on it. So like if you're getting like a bunch of DMs, people like, yo, bro, like you should make merch, like this is cool. And you notice it where it's like, damn, I didn't get a lot of DMs like this, or a lot of comments like this, then, you know, start working on it. There's a demand for it. But you have to, you know, plan for the cap that most people, <laughs> that most people reject when they say it. Like, a lot of times people will say it, they don't expect it. So I say like, I was looking at like, realistically, maybe like 5% of the people who say they'll buy something, and you would actually buy something. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, but I think before the merch, it should come, an attempt at like collecting people, figuring out which of the people that follow and support you are kind of a little bit more diehard. So it's like a sales funnel for a business, right? Like you have your top of the funnel people that are like mildly interested in you. And then every step of the funnel is pretty much a test to see which of these people are the more likely candidates to buy something from you. So the person that watched your ad isn't as likely to buy a t-shirt from you as the person that subscribed to your email list, right? Or the person that gave you their phone number or the person that even on a more basic level, let's say like viewer of the ad, right? Then follower or subscriber, then email list or SMS list subscriber, and then purchase. Like each of those points lets you know like who is the more likely to buy something or do something if I ask them to. So I think like before, start or it could be in the midst of when you're starting to see people have some merch stuff but i think before you get to the point of trying to sell merch that should be that way of like collecting people first to figure out who are the people that are more likely to buy something from you because then those are the people that you should be trying to sell to so like if you have a thousand followers 200 and 200 emails you know what I'm saying like yeah still put the general stuff out about buying it to people like put out your posts on instagram on twitter and shit but a bulk of the hard sales work is going to go from trying to sell to those people on their email list because those people have already shown you they're a little bit more likely to buy from you because they took an extra step, they did a little bit extra work to get onto that list. So I think like it's like viewing it in those sequences. Like we were talking about with the ads, you got your general brand awareness phase. I'm just trying to get people to see me. I don't really care what happens. I'm just trying to engage. Yeah. Engage results. Then from brand awareness. We look at like lead generation comes next, which lead generation is how can I get these people to give me that information? How can I get a phone number out of you or an email out of you? What can I do to get you to sign up for my list while I may send you stuff out? And then from that point is nurturing, which goes back to what we were talking about, engaging with these people, um, providing value for them without asking for anything first, which for artists that could be like exclusive content, discounts, music, Whatever you see fit, whatever they like for you. If someone like your brand could be like, yo, I'ma just every every Sunday we're gonna do like a like a like a book club type of thing with anime. You know what I'm saying? You you figure out like what is the process you're gonna use to build with your fans with. Then you do that for a while, then you move into monetization. Cool. Now I've worn them up, they're familiar with me, they are, you know, connected to me. Now let me sell them some shit. Okay. Cause I think I think I know where you headed and I think I know how to do it. Cause like I started a Discord and I got like a few people in there. Mm-hmm. So I think once I pretty much like zone in on the Discord, I think I'm gonna end up running some some ads on it to get to get more people involved. Mm-hmm. And then I think that's that's a good way to, you know, warm people up. They know me. They feel like they get to talk to me on a regular basis. You know what I mean? And they already took that step to join it anyway, and they're being active in there. So I feel like exactly, bro. That's a good way to look at it. Like I said, like. They left whatever app they were on to go to that app to find you. They care. Yeah, that's that's true. And then um, I use I don't know if anybody like on this call uses their like close friends list on Instagram or knows what it is. Yeah. So what I do to qualify people sometimes like I do a lot of polls to see like who is gonna 
who he asks the most or who actually like answers my polls or questions or whatever. And then like, I'll kind of like keep a tally on like the, the names that I see most often. And then I'll keep a tally of like, okay, this person always answers my questions. This person always watches my story or whatever. They always engage in some sort of way. So like I'll add them to my close friends list. So I know, kind of know like who is more than just a follower. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nah, that's a that's a that's a good idea too. Like, I've seen people make their close friends into like damn near like an exclusive club with certain fans and shit. There was one point I seen bigger accounts like this is I don't think everyone should do this, but they were selling like slots into their close friend group because they were doing exclusive shit on it, bro. Like people were pretty much turning into like their own subscription service type of thing in Instagram. So that's a good idea. That's another level to it where, like I said, you actively are always trying to figure out who is more engaged with me, who cares more about me than whoever else. And then as people become interested in you, they're always looking for ways to be differentiated from people who didn't do as much. You know, so that's the, it's, the, it's the same reason we have general admission and VIP tickets. It's the same reason you have fans and super fans. Like people want to be like, okay, what will differentiate me from the rest, what can I do to show I'm a bigger supporter of you than these other people who said I support you? Oh, I can do this and I get into your super friend, your super friends group or your close friends group and I can see this type of stuff. Cool. I'm going to do that. And then that shows you, oh yeah, this person is somebody I need to pay attention to just like you're doing. For sure. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, bro. No doubt, bro. Um, let me see. What time? It's the network. Thank <laughs> you.